Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and we are returning to the virtual reality digs of Emu VR. This is an awesome emulator. If you guys haven't used it before, it's a little cumbersome to set up, I will grant you. It's more complicated than just uh, an emulator that just runs on your desktop. But this is so cool, as you can see. Today we are playing Sin and Punishment, which is a Japanese exclusive N64 game that didn't come to Virtual Console till 2007, um, but is considered one of the best N64 games of all time, so I'm very interested to try this one out. It was a little ahead of its time in that it's, I believe from what I've read, it's kind of a twin stick shooter, and you may wonder, well, how did that work? The N64 only had one analog stick. Well, I think the right analog stick kind of moved and aimed, or the analog stick moved and aimed, and your left hand, so your right hand was actually supposed to hold the analog stick, and your left was supposed to hold the D-pad and move your character, and that's basically twin sticking it, right? It's It, it was a very unique concept at the time. I think ahead of the game in many ways. Um, now this being, this is the real Japanese version of the game. Um, so I, I basically had two decisions to make today. One, do I play, try and get like a virtual console English translated version? And that would have been fun. Then we would have known what the hell was actually going on. Because the menus, by the way, are all in Japanese. I've looked ahead. We're going to be screwed today. Um, but in the interest of our channel, I feel like authenticity is what is most fun at least for me, and I hope for you guys too. And I've been meaning to come back to this Emu VR. I played uh, Indiana Jones in it a while back. Um, and uh, I, I, I just saw this as an opportunity to come back to Emu VR. Um, and because I don't have this game and I can't get the Japanese, the original version, I thought, what if I play the original version on simulated original hardware? Um, and that brings us up to speed for, for today. So um, now the D-pad, so I'm using, uh, this is an emulated game, so I'm actually using an Xbox controller for this, which normally would make, I think, the gameplay easier on me because, you know, Xbox controllers just have a more modern control feel. But because you're supposed to use a D-pad, <laughs> this is a little complicated. So we're going to see how this even works today. But uh, it's, it's the experience, guys, right? We don't necessarily play these games. I, at least this is the justification I have to go through now. This, we don't normally play these games to do amazing at them. We play them in order to experience the past together. So we have gone back into a virtual 90s bedroom. Um, and uh, we are getting... Imagine that this is a bootleg Japanese game that, you know, your friend's dad brought back from Hong Kong. And... You know, you slam it into your N64, and you just got to figure it out. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. So, oh, they're even showing you how to do this. This is actually good, because this will help me. Okay, so the analog stick... Oh, I'm sorry, I was mistaken. The analog stick, it is... Oh, wait, no, wait, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they do want you to do analog and D-pad. Very interesting. All right, I'm going to give it a try. My thumbs will be reversed, though. I think this is going to confuse my brain hardcore, but we're going to try it. Um, you pull the trigger to shoot. Um, even though I can't read anything, I'm getting the gist of it. And actually, I really appreciate this tutorial. It, it does seem to make it very intuitive to understand uh, what to do. And then, oh my god, how, how are you supposed to do that? They presumably want you to have like three hands here. How are you supposed to press the, the A or B button or whatever that was? Most games, I feel like I skip the tutorial, but here I'm like watching intently because, again, such a unique control scheme. Okay, move out of the way of missiles. Oh, you can use the C stick if you want, it looks like, the, the C buttons. So maybe actually I can just use the Xbox's two analog sticks. I think the second analog stick maps onto the C buttons, if I'm not mistaken. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah, for the D-pad, I like how the buttons are lighting up as the character's moving. That is so handy, actually. This is like one of the best tutorials I've ever seen for explaining a control scheme to players. Um, okay, I feel like we've probably seen enough. We can muddle our way through the rest like we always do. So let's just go for it. Year 2000. So yeah, what do you guys think of the, the VR? Oh god, yeah, this is a Japanese menu. Okay, hold on. Um, let's just select the first option. I presume that's pretty good. Okay, and here we go. 
Okay, so the analog stick aims... Okay, so this moves you. Okay, so that's not too bad. Oh, you know what? You know what is screwing me up, though? Is, um... The... This... The, the analog aiming is, like... Inverted to where it feels like it should be? Or actually, maybe it isn't. Okay, so the... The second analog stick to the right simply moves you right and left. And it's the first one that aims you, but it also moves you. What does the D-pad do? The D-pad just moves you left and right as well. Okay. Maybe the controls aren't as intuitive as I thought. Oh, God. Um, but it does sort of seem to be slightly ahead of the game in terms of trying to do something with both movement and aiming at the same time. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think of this, this whole VR setup, by the way? Um, so... I've I've only used this this emulator emu VR twice. I think it's really cool. It really does for me Sort of it, it gives us like a cool background in which to play these games like, you know we're, we're playing this on a CRT and stuff and one thing I think I talked about this in the Indiana Jones video because I was using the emulator there, too But one thing that is so interesting to me is the idea that you could actually play zapper games in this and they would be like the Zapper games on a real NES. And so I'm kind of wondering, would you guys be interested in a Zapper uh, mini-series where we play some Zapper games um, in VR here? Um, I'd have to actually crack out my Oculus, because from what I have seen, if you try and play Zapper games without an actual VR, um, what ends up happening is your you mouse aim, and it just it looks far less cool. If you're in VR, you're actually holding the Zapper and stuff, and it, it, it really simulates like having a Zapper. So, I've never recorded a video using a VR headset before. And I don't even know how easy that would be to do, or if there's other complications around it. I presume it's not that complicated, but... Yeah, if you guys are interested, you let me know, I'll give it a shot. Um, because, yeah, just, just seeing this seeing this on a TV, I don't know, is just is kind of cool, I think. Could just be me, but I think it's kind of cool. Alright, so this- the, the gameplay appears to be just sort of like, run forward and shoot at everything. It, it, you know what it kind of reminds me of? There's an old NES game called Cabal. I think I- did I even play Cabal? I think I played Cabal on- uh, it, it was in the Thousand and One book. Played on Commodore 64 and NES. Or maybe it was a fan recommendation. Either way, Cabal... It's sort of like you just, you you don't run forward into the world, you just stand still and enemies come and you shoot them and stuff. But this feels very similar to that, only that it's added a 3D dimension of going forward. Good morning, Saki. Good morning. Also, Harry. what's kind of weird is that all the dialogue is in English, but the subtitles are in Japanese. I'm not sure what's going on with that necessarily. I mean, this is a ROM that I'm playing, right? So I maybe somebody dubbed over all the Japanese with English. I'm not 100 percent sure. Let's go. Um. Yeah! Oh, okay, this is the tutorial level, so presumably this will be pretty straightforward. Let's blow up the barrel. Oh, we can keep the barrel going, like in Hogan's Alley. It's kind of cool. This strikes me as the kind of game that would have done really well in arcades. Um, like, I could have seen it doing well there. Okay, I'm gonna use the, the D-pads to actually kind of control my movement a little bit. I have kind of been ignoring it, but they probably have designed the game for you to take advantage of that, so I, I should. Oh, yeah. Civilians are like, you saved us, thank you. We're gonna drop points as we flee. Oh, I'm only getting so many of them. Yeah, this has sort of like a really arcade flavor to it. I don't know what it is, but I could have totally seen this as a Sega game in the arcades in like the uh, late 90s. Oh, these are dudes. They look like uh, bird monsters or something. Looks like wings when, they, when they're jumping on top of those boxes. Looks like they have a wingspan. Oh, look, there's barrels up there to explode. There's a fair degree of auto-aiming, it seems, where as long as you get close enough to a target, you just kind of lock onto it. Which I'm okay with. 
You know what else this kind of reminds me of? It's a 3D Contra. You know, Contra, one of my favorite NES games of all time. Um, whoa! Did I successfully jumped that? I did not. Uh, Contra, one of my favorite NES games of all time. And Super C on the Super Nintendo was also amazing. But this kind of feels like Contra in that it's like you're just holding down the bullet... The bullets, the, the shooting button the whole time. And it's just like a non-stop stream of like alien soldiers and monsters that you're gunning down in like a sci-fi city. I guess it's more like Super C than the original Contra. Oh god. Got me. Oh god, got me again. Oh god, this is actually like really hard to dodge. But he's almost dead. Crab Seamer 2. Kaboom! If they had taken this idea and made a Contra game with it, that could have been kind of cool, actually. I mean, given how they treated translations, you know, when games were translated from west to, uh... From west to east. I could definitely have seen them taking this game and skinning it as a Contra game for the N64. Because I don't think uh, the N64 ever got a Contra game. Got one Star Fox game, one F-Zero... A couple of Metroids, right? We got a couple of Metroids. The N64 is one of my gaming blind spots where, like, I really didn't play it very much as a kid. Uh, I was, like, NES and Super Nintendo. Then I played a bit of PlayStation, then I just went all PC for a while. Became PC Master Race. Whoa, nice try. You gonna zap me. Um, I think it's one thing that helped keep me on the PC side of things for a long time is in high school. That's when, like, emulators and stuff, that's when me and my friends first discovered them. And so I never played Legend of Zelda Link to the Past on Super Nintendo as a kid. I love the Game Boy version, um, the uh, Link's Awakening. Mostly because I really liked the idea of Zelda. I just, like, I never had Legend of Zelda on NES as a kid. I played uh, the second one, Link's Adventure or whatever, at a friend's house and really loved that. But I, like, never owned any of these Zelda games. They always looked so cool to me. I was always so jealous of friends. And then uh, I got Link's Awakening for my birthday one year. I think my grandma bought it for me. Um, and I specifically remember, like, uh, I, I played it, like, almost every day because there was so much in that game. And I think one day... I can't remember why, but it's like it was a weekday. I think I might have been home from school for some reason. Maybe it was a holiday or something. And I remember my grandma was taking me out to get KFC for lunch. It was like a special treat. We drove to the KFC and she went in to pick it up. And I was like sitting in the car waiting for her with my Game Boy playing Link's Awakening. I was in the second dungeon. It was like the desert dungeon or whatever. Specifically remember that. And I'm just thinking, wow, like hanging out with my grandma. She's buying me KFC. She bought me this awesome game. No school today. I get to play this game for the rest of the day. It was like one of the best days. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't sound too sad, but, uh, yeah, my grandma was an awesome lady, and, uh, uh, I guess I, I haven't mentioned her much on the channel, but she, she was pretty cool. Um, she was this old, uh, like, classically British lady, you know, loved the Queen, and, uh, uh, I don't know, what else did she like? Um, British things. She was very British, but, uh, she also was, like, kind of with it in a weird way like she liked star wars and star trek the next generation and she was like you know progressive in her own way you know like old people tend not to be too progressive they're they're known to be a little old old timey and racist and stuff she wasn't like that at all she was like very with it and uh she was a very cool lady anyway i'm getting totally sidetracked here legend of zelda i loved never played it as a kid where was i going with this oh yeah so Link's Awakening is the one I played. And so I always kind of wished I had played uh, Link to the Past. And I, it always looked like a like a more advanced version of Link's Awakening. Um, and then uh, in high school when I discovered emulators, me and my friends really got into Nesticle. And then whatever the Super Nintendo equivalent was. I think it was Zed SNES at the time. 
And once once we found there were emulators, I was like, oh damn, I literally, I, I got Link to the Past and I played it for the very first time, start to finish over a couple of weeks, um, just on my computer. And it was amazing. And I was like, wow, like this is so cool. And it's like emulation like changed things for me. Um, and it basically, at that time, it's like, yes, I was, I, we died by the way. Yes, I was really into PC games. I played a lot of Quake 3 and Command and & Conquer and StarCraft and Grand Theft Auto and all those games that you couldn't really play on console. But I was also still playing Nintendo and Sega games. I was kind of going back and revisiting Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Sega Genesis games that I knew about as a kid that I never got to play or that I just hadn't played in years. So even in my PC phase, I was definitely console gaming, just on the PC. Um, and then years later, I really came back to consoles with the original Xbox because I really got into Halo. Um, and then I got into PlayStation 3 eventually after that. I went Xbox, Xbox 360, PS3. That's sort of the, the, the path I took. And then these days, you know, uh, I obviously play a lot of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I went from Super Nintendo to PC uh, to Xbox, really. So I totally skipped N64, PS2, all that stuff. Um, and so now we get to come back and enjoy these, try these new uh, games, quote unquote new for the first time. Please continue. Um, I'm going to say no. Game over. Game over. Game over, man. Game over. All right, let's see what else is on this menu here. Um, what's this option? Oh, this is like training. Oh, there's like, oh, I thought I thought I had to kill that guy. He's like, stop, please. It's like the equivalent of like trying to kill Clippy. Oh, this is cool. It's like a VR shooting range. It's sort of like Metal Gear Solid uh, VR missions or whatever. Which were like cool challenge maps. Especially the ninja ones. The VR ninja missions are really cool. I should play that sometime on the channel. It's not just more Metal Gear Solid because it's more like uh, action-y kind of things like this. They do have stealth segments and all sorts of stuff, but it's, all, it's like puzzle and challenge maps. We keep killing hostages by, by the way. This is more like Hogan's Alley. Boom. Oh, I was, I was not supposed to kill him. Whoops. Well, he was holding a red thing. He looked evil. Oh, I was supposed to not kill him. I keep targeting civilians by mistake. He just looks so... so meaty and easily... easy to murder. Shut up, Clippy! I like how when you shoot him, his eyes turn, like, bloodshot. Oh, here we go. I like this. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of, maybe there's also a little bit of Star Fox in here as well. Only it's sort of like Star Fox on rails. Whoa, oh God. Oh God, oh God. I'm running into walls here. Oh, these VR walls hurt, man. Yeah, give me that friggin' points. Whoa, we missed a bunch of them. Oh God. Whoa! I guess I don't even- I'm, I'm still shooting out of habit. But I guess I didn't have to shoot. Shut up! Blippy! Clippy! Whatever the hell your name is! Oh, here we go. Oh my god! Oh, I think there's a way to, like, dodge. And I wasn't paying attention to it. Oh god. What is it? I'll figure it out. Or maybe I could just jump. No, there's definitely a way to dodge that I did not pay attention to. I've done it a few times ac- there it is. I've done it a few times accidentally. But that's less helpful. Oh god! Oh wait, it's just... Oh, how did I do that? It's like a tap? No, I, I can't get it to happen consistently. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. Um, is there any way to fail these tutorial missions so we can go back and try one more game mode? I'd love to know. 
Shut up. Okay, let's, um... You know what? Let's reset our console. Now, this is an advantage of having... Playing the game in this emulator. Because we get to actually simulate, like, turning the console off and on again. Uh, which is pretty cool. This is the setup, by the way. I still haven't properly decorated this room. We, uh, you know, apparently you can put your wallpaper posters and stuff up and all sorts of things. If, you, I've, I've mentioned how maybe it'd be kind of cool to set up, like, Jay's Corner and, like, start to play all my Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, N64 games in VR like this. And maybe that could, maybe my, I could shift into that into my channel a bit. I mean, it wouldn't really change what my channel does, but just give us different, uh, background. Uh, but for now, I haven't fully committed to that idea. Mostly because it would take a lot of work to redecorate the room and, you know, Jay's a busy guy. But maybe, I don't know, if you guys think it's a cool idea. I, I still want to pursue that Zapper idea. I think that might be cool. And I have an Oculus Rift sitting in a box somewhere with motion controls. Just literally haven't done anything with it in a couple of years. It's kind of sad. A lot of waste of money. Uh, it's just a high scoreboard. Okay, what is this? Oh, that's like changing difficulty or something. Uh-oh, what was easy? <laughs> we shall never know. What's this do? I don't know, changes something else. Uh, what's this? 12 credits. Oh, this is where we left off. Alright, well, we'll... We'll play for a few more minutes, maybe, and then wrap it up. Let's see if we can kill, pass one more level or kill one more boss. How about that? We'll go from there. Oh, jeez. I, I need to get better at, like, moving around the environment. Like, it definitely is a thing where... The two sticks don't entirely work. Like, it's not a true twin stick shooter. Because it's like, okay, if I'm holding left on the analog stick... And then I press right, I don't move. But if I'm not aiming, then I can... So it's like you kind of have to aim where you want to shoot and then just move around. So it's... Yeah, it's a little clunkier than a true twin stick shooter. I'll say that much. Um, but maybe once you get used to it, there's something to it. I don't know. I wish when you aimed it didn't move you it's weird that it does because it's like you move when you aim and you can also just stay in one position and move with the, the d-stick or the d-pad the d-stick <laughs> my mind went dirty there for a second we all know what the d-stick is um oh we beat this guy before didn't we whippy whippy the troll come come back for more eh whippy now that he... It's annoying that he moves around. How do, you, how do you dodge? It's like a mystery we'll never solve. How to dodge. Oh, we died! Oh, we're straight up game over! I thought we had 12 credits! Alright, well, that's okay. We needed to find an endpoint anyway. Um, this has been Sin and Punishment. Uh, hold on, it has a Japanese name too, actually. Let me, uh... See here. Tsumi Tubatsu Hoshi no Keshua. Ke Kesh Keshusha. Japanese for sin and punishment. It's a mouthful. Um, this is one of the games from the book of Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. It seemed like a decent game. It's, it reminded me of like sort of arcadey style shooters and stuff. I don't know about the best N64 game of all time, but you know, people consider it that, and it probably was ahead of its time in its control scheme trying to encourage the twin stick stuff i don't know if it was a quirk of the emulator or if that's how get, exactly how it played with where you move the analog stick you move the targeter left and right but i feel like i didn't like that i wish it played more like a modern twin stick shooter uh, and they have to give us some credit because obviously if it was the first it was the first and not not many or any games would have tried uh, the twin stick stuff before besides some uh, arcade games. So, you know, it's probably, uh, 
you know, it, it, it might have helped uh, pave the path for modern twin sticks. So we'll cut it some slack there. But um, if you like those style shooter games, I'd say check it out. You might enjoy it. If you're more used to more modern style twin stick shooters, probably you could play more modern versions of this game or games like it. I don't know how much this older one would appeal to you, but um, those are just my thoughts. If you actually played this game back in the day and you can weigh in on like how much it blew your mind or how cool it was, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. And as always, guys, whatever you think of the game or my opinions of it, I hope you did have some fun here. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like the video and come on back soon. And if you like Jay's VR room, we need a better name for it. I was going to say VR shack, but it's not really a shack. It's more like a 90s bedroom. Um, but if you want to see more games from uh, Jay's VR bedroom here, uh, do let me know uh, because maybe I'll actually put in the effort to make this our regular emulation station, so to speak. Um, but until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves and we'll see you soon. Ready, guys. Peace.